I'm Strave Gunter, as Adam mentioned. I'm going to be presenting on intense pulse light therapy, which is being used as a novel treatment for refractory dry eye disease around the country. I became involved in this research while working with uh, Dr. Joanne Shen, who's a corneal specialist at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. So I'm going to go over what intense pulse light therapy is, the possible mechanisms of action, and prospective um, and retrospective topic, there is a need for better dry eye disease therapies as we know, and aerobing gland dysfunction is uh, the primary cause of evaporative dry eye disease and contributes to issues of condition dry eye disease. Um, it's also a major contributor, contributor to um, poor quality of life in, our, in these patients. Uh, the goal of aerobing gland therapy is to provide long-term improvements of symptoms for patients and to improve objective factors like movement quality, improve uh, clear film stability, and decrease inflammation. While there's a variety of treatment options available for these patients, like uh, topical cyclosporin, uh, systemic doxycycline, and uh, thermal pulsation, patients often don't experience complete or long-term resolution of their symptoms. So what is intense pulse light therapy, also known as IPL? It's adapted from the field of dermatology, where it's um, FDA approved for the use of uh, or to treat telangiectasias, dictasias, acne rosacea, acne vulgaris, um, unwanted hair, and even photodamaged skin. Um, so this is a picture of the xenon flash lamp right here. Um, and this is the device that's actually used against the skin. So this emits a high intensity light source that's polychromatic and incoherent with uh, uh, wavelengths in the range of the 500s to the 1200 nanometers. Um, and with the intensity or energy level of eight to 20 joules per centimeter squared. It's an expensive treatment. It costs about $500 per treatment of both eyes. So the story of how IPL came to um, ophthalmology is interesting. Dr. Orlando Toyos was a, is a comprehensive ophthalmologist uh, in private practice in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, and he was treating as a side business some um, rosa acne rosacea patients with IPL. The patients came back to him and said, well, my, IPL, my dry eye disease is actually improving. So he received a grant to test this further. He didn't find any significant results, but he did um, come up with the Toyos technique, which is described here in these pictures. So first, um, eye shields are applied to the patient's eyelids to protect the irises from the xenon flash lamp. Then ultrasound gel is applied to these areas, the upper cheeks and the temporal areas. And uh, 30 flashes of light are applied in those areas where we see the red dots. Then uh, the IPL um, eye shields are removed and the patient undergoes forceful mabobing gland expression of the upper and lower eyelids to help secrete those toothpaste-like thick secretions that are clogging up those mabobing glands. It's pretty painful at this point. The IPL itself only feels like um, a mild pinch every time the pulse is applied. Patients usually receive one to four treatments that are about one month apart, um, and then afterwards they can receive maintenance treatments about every month or so. Dr. Toyos has trained uh, several ophthalmologists around the country, and now there's uh, over 40 centers that perform IPL nationally, um, but there aren't any in Utah last time I checked earlier this week. Um, so the mechanism of action of IPL is not completely understood yet, but we have some ideas based on in vitro chromophore research and in vivo dermatology and EMT research. So we know that um, the skin has two primary chromophores, melanin and hemoglobin. Uh, the energy absorbed by melanin decreases as the wavelength of light, light increases, whereas um, oxyhemoglobin absorbs light at a peak uh, wavelength of 578 nanometers, which is the wavelength of yellow light. Um, so when yellow light is applied to the skin, it's able to pass through the upper layers of the skin without being significantly absorbed by the melanin. It reaches the oxyhemoglobin in the blood vessels. Uh, the oxyhemoglobin converts that light energy into heat energy, which then coagulates the vessels. In a situation like acne rosacea, um, the more leaky blood vessels would be uh, coagulated, and this would lead to less inflammation and inflammatory markers reaching the eyelids in uh, dry conditions. So in theory, um, IPL would work best for patients who have telangiectasias. There's also been some research um, in dermatology and in vivo uh, acne vulgaris, showing that there is some upregulation of these inflammatory mediators. Um, so TGS beta specifically is upregulated after IPL treatments. TNF alpha is downregulated, but this doesn't necessarily apply to acne rosacea. I'm not going to go into details on that. Um, of mm -hmm. note, application of heat um, as like thermal pulsation is not a mechanism of action of IPL. Um, this is because research has shown that um, IPL, uh, post-IPL, the skin temperature only increases about one degree Celsius. So next I'd like to talk about the retrospective study that was uh, done at Mayo Clinic, uh, in which we performed the Toyos technique, and we found that it does improve dry eye symptoms and mobile gland function in refractory dry eye patients. This is an uh, analysis of our prelim preliminary data. 
So in this study, uh, we, had, we found 36 patients who had complete data pre and post IPL to be, involved, to be included in the study. Patient selection was left rather broad. Patients did not necessarily have to have um, ocular rosacea. We figured if patients have had refractory dry eye disease for a while, then they most likely have some, um, some uh, mimobine gland dysfunction anyway. So this treatment may help them. So patient selection included decreasing speed two scores and they would have had to fail all other therapies subjectively. So speed two is a symptom survey of dry eye disease severity that patients uh, can t fill out. It's a validated survey just like our ocular surface disease index. Um, and as the number increases, so from zero to 28, as higher numbers of speed two in indicate more severe dry eye disease. Um, patients also had to have Fitzpatrick skin types one through four. Um, this ranges, Fitzpatrick skin, Fitzpatrick skin type ranges from one to six, and five and six were excluded because they have higher melanin levels. They would have been at risk for higher um, uh, photo damage. Patients were treated with the Toyo's technique of IPL and mevobine gland expression. And then um, before each treatment with IPL, patients underwent a speed two score um, symptom survey, and then they had a slit lamp exam and mevobine gland evaluation. So mevobine gland evaluation is counting the number of eyelid, uh, lower eyelid mevobine glands that yield liquid secretions, those are the normal healthy secretions, when uh, gentle, force, gent gentle continuous pressure is applied. Um, and then our primary measures were to look at how many of those glands were expressing, so mevobine gland evaluation, and speed two score. There was a minimum of six months of follow-up after the first IPL uh, mevobine gland expression therapy. Our results showed that there was a significant decrease in speed two scores with this therapy, and uh, speed two scores improved in 89% of patients. However, a small portion did have no change or an increase in speed two, so worth mentioning here. Um, MGE, or the number of glands yielding those liquid secretions uh, in at least one eye, um, uh, was improved in 78% of patients. 42% of patients had improvement in both eyes. So in summary, um, the majority of patients had an improvement in mevobine gland expression <coughs> and speed two. However, there are many limitations to the study, as you can um, probably notice. Uh, the major confounding factor is that there was mevobine gland expression also combined with IPL therapy. So we didn't test IPL on its own. We tested the Toyo's technique, which is used around the country. Um, patients may have continued the use of drops. We didn't ask them to discontinue those at home, so preserve the free drops. Um, we also didn't select for a specific etiology of dry eye disease among patients. So there may have been some patients with Sjogren's disease or graft versus host disease, and we plan to go back and exclude those patients from our study. Um, patients may also have had other um, causes of aqueous deficient dry eye, like lack ophthalmos. So those patients wouldn't have improved even if you, if you did IPL on them. The minority of patients, with minority of patients who didn't improve um, uh, may have also been uh, an old part of the older population. We did have an older population in our study. Uh, median age was uh, 65 years. Uh, they may have had uh, end-stage gland atrophy. Uh, this would have been, um, it would have been helpful to evaluate this with mabography to see if that was actually the case. So we may have missed the therapeutic window for these patients. So while I'm talking about the limitations of our study, I also wanted to mention the controversy surrounding IPL. Um, there are believers and there are non-believers. <laughs> and um, the mechanism of action of IPL is not proven. So um, we're still in the process of figuring that out. Uh, often IPL therapy is confounded with adjunctive therapies like the lid massages and expression, and also sometimes drops as well in some places. Um, there's no uh, treatment of the lid margin directly, so people wonder, well, how are you actually affecting the mevobine glands? Also, another point of contention is that it's not a cure. If you take acne rosacea as an example, uh, treating the telangiectasias ectasias themselves is not treating the uh, cause of the, of the disease, you're treating a, um, an outcome of the disease. Uh, the cause of acne rosacea is not necessarily known, but it, it's a dysfunction in your innate immune system. It's also an expensive therapy that's not um, FDA approved. But in support of the efficacy of IPL alone, uh, Jennifer Craig, who's an optometrist in New Zealand, published a prospective double mask, placebo-controlled paired eye study. And she found that in her 28 patients, there was an improvement in liquid layer grade and tear breakup time, and also an improvement in uh, speed, speed score um, post-IPL. She tested IPL on its own without the mevobine gland expression. So this was published this year. And two other studies that were retrospective also published this year using the Toyos technique are by Dr. Toyos and Dr. Gupta um, at the Duke Eye Center. Um, and they also found that there was an improvement in uh, mevobin quality and tear break of time and uh, symptom score in the majority of patients. So with that, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to be at the, at the Moran to present to, all, to you all today. Thank you.
you did three for, for you know, success with mass closure. I'm glad you did kill one. Yeah. You killed it and had something. Because when you're not sure what the mechanism is, when you see that it's not really feeding the myelomian glands, now the vast majority of the myelomian glands in the upper lid, not the lower lid, and you can say, well, the lower lid treatment is doing something to treat the rear of the myelomian glands, but there's nothing on the upper lid. And when you can't get a treat the myelomian glands, you have to come up with a device that you mask the cornea and then actually put this pulse therapy right on the lid itself, assuming that's the case, which you know that it isn't now. Mm -hmm. And so when you see something that's invented by someone who's then training everybody to put it out, it's backed by those respective studies. The reason why you don't see it here in Utah is because it's a lot of skepticism. And mm -hmm. so the only way you're going to allay that skepticism is by mass prospective studies, just like the one that you killed. Mm -hmm. You could, there's one that shows that when you're not doing on the, the procedures themselves, just doing the therapy, if you want to do it for chemo control or maybe you touch their skin but don't put the light on it or something because we see this a lot in, in various other areas and, and there's a reason why it's not being used all over the place. I agree, absolutely. So we definitely need <coughs> new good treatments for my bone gland disease, no question about it. Um, the other thing that, that has always kind of charge for my bone and gland stuff. That's I right. Mean, no more yeah. than that. You can charge for the lot. The five hundred dollars is for the lot. So the, the two were combined together and you get the five hundred dollars and you have the lot. So it's always been kind of hokey for all the mm -hmm. reasons you just asked the panel and we've talked about. The other one is is it's doing a really rigorous uh, study where you compare because again both of us have seen a lot of uh, anti seventy two and there, there, there's just all kinds of subjective content in that CT follow through. Is that that masking? I mean, that there that people feel the treatment. I mean, you're, you're treating, you're stressing. I mean, and how, how do you get a patient from that where you're not, you know, you're, you're not doing something that, that I mean, it's, it's a patient thing. I mean, it's all the patient thing. So it's a it's a tough one. Um, I followed. I, I thought that the, the one study that came out, you know, looked a bit more impatient. But frankly, I'm not even sure that I should put this in. <laughs> It is, why, yeah. Why it's so removed from my mm -hmm. bone which in particular there was a documentary that I read years ago that the most of the, you know, my bone and glands were with the anti-72 treatment. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least we followed. Uh, there, there are other things that are out there. I'm, I'm confident we can do a better job. But this stuff is a very common problem and uh, it leaves a lot of people troubled with it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we don't uh, treat the upper lids directly is that there, there has been a case report published that the iris was zapped um, during one of these treatments. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's why we keep those eye shields on. <laughs> sure, that's like crazy and pigeons are perched everywhere. And yeah, it's not good.
Thank you. I, I agree that uh, sometimes when patients do invest that much money, their perception of their improvement also changes sometimes if they're investing that much time and money. Yeah, if you don't get it And there is proof that mammalian gland expression in, in previous studies does alone improve um, 